coach in terms of consistency. Servasi Dennis has played, you know, nearly every snap. He's near the team lead in tackles. He's TFLs. What have you seen from him that's helped guide this new linebacking core? You know, you got Bengali and Shane coming in as starters. Yeah, I mean, Boss has been been really good, solid. His preparation, like you said, is consistent. Uh, the way he goes about his business is consistent. His leadership um, has been great, and um, you know he's helped bring those guys along um, in, in, in a way that, again, his performance ha has been good. Um, and so I'm excited about Boss. I think he's a very talented player. Um, he's worked you know, on his collision skills. You're seeing guys go backwards a little more, I think, than last year. If you look at some of those tackles um, and, and different plays, and again, his blitzes, um, he's making some plays in the backfield, which is good to see. So really excited about him. How impressed are you with Bengali? Servasi told us it took him a minute to get up to game speed, but it seems like he's kind of caught up now and he's really settled in out there. Yeah, I love coaching Gali. And, and um, you know, he's a young guy, first year, really getting that experience. I think he's come a long way already in this season and he'll continue to grow. Um, and so every day, you know, he's making strides and it's, it's, it's important to him. I think, you know, he's, he's in early watching film and growing and, uh, you know, he takes mistakes personal and he grows from it. And, um, and so in all areas, I think he, he's making strides, whether that's defending the run, coverage, blitzing, um, his preparation, um, and just becoming a professional and, and learning to do things the right way. So excited about his growth. Um, and, and obviously there, there's, there's still room for improvement. Pat talked about how you guys had 27 different players get snaps on the defensive side of the ball. Who were some of the rotational guys, maybe the younger players that stood out to you in your position group against Rhode Island? Yeah, I think we had six linebackers play. Mm -hmm. um, and so you saw um, in the middle there, Boss and Brandon George, who are uh, mainstays here for a, for a while. And so you, you're used to seeing those guys, but they got a good amount of reps, good plays in there um, to the star, uh, to the field. You saw uh, Golly and you saw um, Tyler Wilts out there. Um, and again, Tyler's another guy showing great strides and growth, um, had a good week on special teams and on defense. So again, he's really um, doing some good things, excited about where he's at. Um, and then the other side, you saw Shane. Um, again, he, he continues to be consistent there, money. Um, and, and again, Solly, Solomon to Shields, his, his growth is showing and he gets more and more confident um, in, in his, his, his play and, and you know, his experience level is growing. So those six guys got play in Rhode Island um, and excited to see them launch that into ACC play and really take this next step as we um, enter conference play. Did those back three guys of that group of six get more snaps? It looked like it was pretty even as far as the rotation went. Yeah, I would say they had we had a steady rotation there, um, and, and so last week more reps than yeah. normal. Yep. What's your confidence level in, in using any of those six as the games become more critical down the stretch here? Absolutely, I feel real good. I feel good that those guys have um, not only earned our trust as a coaching staff, but each other's trust. They can trust the man next to them when they line up that he's going to know what to do, um, and, and they can hold each other accountable. And so that that depth is there, um, that trust level is there. And um, again, guys are going to continue to have to make uh, plays as we move through this conference play. Right. Talk about taking the next step in ACC play. What does that look like? And what do they need to do to reach that next level you want them to get to? Yeah, with four non-conference games under our belt, there's a lot of learning lessons. Um, and so now it's time to, to go. And we know Georgia Tech's going to be a hungry team coming in here. Um, and, and so we've been hungry from the beginning. We're going to go meet that um, and, and be ready to, to play hard. And every every play counts, right? Every play is a new life. And so, um, you know, we talk about scope in our room, right? It starts with that situ awareness, um, understanding where we are on the field, down and distance, what's going on, getting the call, uh, seeing the offense, expectations there from tendencies, understanding our responsibilities in the run or pass, and then executing, right? Reading our key, doing our job, and finishing productively. And so every single play is a life cycle when it's within itself and we need to win that rep um, and, and so th that's what it takes again I think in conference play every single snap um, I think we did that well at times last year and, it, and again it led to a lot of production so we'll need to continue to do that this year in conference play um, and, and again continue to step up be consistent there's going to be adversity we have to handle that and keep making plays who stood out in the Georgia Tech yeah, I mean, quarterback's a good player, right? Tall guy in there, athletic player, can make the throws, can run. Um, you know, he, he's a challenge in the pocket. Um, you know, they have three three tailbacks that can all make plays. Um, good rotation there. They all have backs out, or catches out of the backfield, so good hands. Um, they keep them fresh. I think, you know, solid at tight end. They have some skilled guys on the perimeter um, and, and an O-line that can play football. And so I think um, we're going to see a lot of guys, you know, a few guys, I shouldn't say, that we saw last year that made plays against us that we're going to have to, that are going to be confident coming in. Like I said, they got new life, maybe new excitement level. Um, so we'll see. We know it's going to be a, a, a tough ball game. We're going to be ready to compete with those guys. Ryan, has it gotten 
to the point in, in the game where you could just kind of expect athletic quarterbacks that can make plays, extend plays, use their feet every week? I think so, and I, I think you're, you're even seeing in the NFL now, right? And in college football, has been here for a while, but, um, and again, those guys can extend plays. So you're talking about in coverage, making sure you understand scramble situations or extended plays and um, who's secondary contain and then pass rush, um, being able to keep your hips down and change direction. That guy lose the pocket, but also still be able to pin your ears back and get to that launch point um, and not be so soft that you're not pushing the pocket. And so uh, that athletic quarterback, like you said, has become more commonplace. Um, but again, I think Sims is a really good talent and certainly um, we'll have to go get him.